Good evening and welcome to Holden Evening Prayer, beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. This is the last of us, the Holden Evening Prayer, which is a beautiful Advent service written for the Holden Village in the mountains of Washington, which has since become very popular, especially in Lutheran circles, as an evening prayer service. This is our last one because it's an Advent service and everyone ready for Sunday morning? Wow. As we have been traveling with Holden in this service, we have noticed and we have lifted up various things we might learn from the community that exists. As we seek to learn from how they are. Because their impact spreads more than just through this worship service. And it raises questions for us. How we might be a part of cultivating a more just, sustainable, and compassionate world. How are we a courageous community that helps people form and renew relationships? How do we build and practice community? And what do we value? As a retreat center in the mountains, they have particular needs and gifts and opportunities that we might not have. But what can we learn from them about community building, holding on to our Lutheran roots? And what do we commit? As we take up a cross and follow the one who will be born, how might we seek to be a community in a world that seems so fractious. And so for us this evening, as we've looked at these different commitments throughout these weeks, tonight we lift up a community that lives out its mission with joy, participating in the gracious love of God. Our mission here at Beautiful Savior is we invite all to live in grace, generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. There are many things we hold in common and things we continue to learn. And so, as we prepare our hearts to receive the birth of the newborn king, let us begin. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. A light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. Shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens 
heaven's splendor, every dancing star of night. Make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of all creation. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. O God, I call to you, come to me now, O oh, hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Keep watch within me, God, deep in my heart may the light of your love be burned. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. All praise to the God of all, creator of life. All praise be to Christ and the Spirit of love. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. For this evening, from Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain that Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you until the end of the age. The light shines in the darkness. In the darkness of the night. We commit to be a community that lives out its mission with joy, participating in the gracious love of God. Do we know that we are part of an organization that is entirely unique in all the world? If we do it right, we are the only organization that exists for people who are not members. Which is an odd thing for many of us to hear because, well, you, we've been raised in a time and a place of membership in the church has certain obligations, but often comes with certain perks. Sometimes we gave this particular message a sense of, well, I'm saved, and you unwashed masses are just, well, doomed. But even if we believe that, what Jesus commanded his disciples on that mountain in Galilee was, we got to go out and get them. We have to go out and do, teach them everything I commanded you. So we all got to break out our small catechisms, and we got to break out our Bibles, and we've got to go to them and go, Thus saith the Lord, or thus saith Martin Luther, for it is most certainly true. But if you've ever tried to teach someone something how six or you've ever tried to learn something how successful were you in just being handed a book or better yet how successful were you when the models around you were not modeling that which they were supposedly teaching you Hence, Jesus' command to take up a cross and follow. Sacrificial love, humility, service, compassion, mercy, grace. Everything that Jesus commanded us, he gave us so that we can go out and do it. And that's part of the blessing. We're invited into this work of life and love, of redemption and reconciliation, of new life, of hope. On this night, that is the longest night of the year, we dare to light a whole bunch of candles. We dare to say, this will not last. And more importantly, we dare to live like that is true. Because we've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've been claimed. We've been marked. We've been sealed. Done. Paid in full. Now go out there and remind everybody else that that is most certainly true. Share this good news. And that should be joy. Remember, Jesus is commanding his disciples at a time and place where proclaiming things that Jesus commanded people to do was a fast track to get fed to a lion or used as a tiki torch. But they went out with joy. Do we commit to go out into our neighbors, to our world, 
to the situations that are around us with a sense of joy. That there's good things happening. There is a God who loves you no matter what. Will love you. I mean, you're worth the life of the Son of God. That God will love you to death and then not stay there. That knowledge, that understanding, led these people to go off into the face of the lions and everything else like that. We don't have that. I remember watching a movie once where it's, you know, where someone who habitually, ritually went to church and during the sermon balanced her checkbook. Her friend commented that you don't celebrate your faith, you mourn it. Do we celebrate our faith? Do we celebrate the love that is coming? Are we celebrating this gift of grace and mercy that allows us to try again when things seem like they've absolutely, totally failed beyond all measure of uh, redemption? Do we dare to believe that God made the world good and is working hard to prove it? by how much God loves us and how much that gift allows us to love our neighbor or if we let it, even our enemy. Because we are called. We're invited. We're empowered. Given reasons for joy. wound up like the old-fashioned toy and set loose out into the world to go and do it. And the question we all have is not only will we do it in joy, but as Holden teaches us, it really is a community. We can't do it alone. It's impossible. How might we as a community of faith nurture, support, and encourage one another so that you may see joy when it's hard to? But more importantly, that we all know that we have gifts and talents and the abilities and the opportunities and the calling to share the love of God in Jesus Christ. This is most certainly true as well. So remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I know we said that before, but on this darkest night, we need to remind ourselves. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. shall bear a child and his name shall be Jesus the chosen one of God most high and Mary said I am a servant of my God I live to do your will my soul proclaims your greatness, O God, 
and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servants here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness in life, give to your people the peace that surpasses all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There he was on that mountain just days before his disciples saw him hanging from a cross. 
The day before that, he gathered them around a table. Told them about life, new life. The gift of his life. The shedding of his blood. What it meant for them and what it meant for the world. And here they are on this mountain seeing him again. And they worshipped him. But some doubted. We come to the table not necessarily full of certainty. We might come full of doubts, full of questions, full of worries and concerns. Jesus knows that. Hence why he said, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. It isn't all sweetness and light. It's what God wants. It's not what we have. But God will do what God can to remind us of the fact we're never alone. That in the worst, there is still hope. In the face of hate, there is still the ability to love. In the midst of condemnation, there is still the power of forgiveness and release. In the face of death, there is new life. So we remember that on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat, and said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it all the drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So may we receive yet again. And may it strengthen us. As we go forth in joy, sent forth by God, filled with his spirit, filled with his love, filled with his grace, to go and tell the whole world about it, so that all may proclaim Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. For communion, you'll be invited to come forward. Uh, I will meet you at the end of the aisle and give you the wafers. They're gluten-free wafers. So should be no issues one way or the other for that. Uh, behind me, there will be a stand with uh, the tray for wine and grape juice. The empties can go in the containers that are off to either side towards the front. And there is also space for uh, reflection and prayer and a couple of prayer stations on either side. And for those of you joining us online, simple plate, simple cup, bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, something simple, Jesus sat at this banquet table and he picked the basic simple staples off of it to show us what God can do with simple things like us. So the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. This brings to the end our season of Holden. Again, Christmas Eve is Saturday. 3, 5, 30, and 8 will be our services here at Beautiful Savior. On Christmas Day, there will be one at 10 a.m. Being able to sing at 10 a.m., yeah. Singing, you know, well, 10 p.m. would be easier uh, for me at that point in time. <laughs> uh, I could sleep in then. 10 a.m., which is Lessons and Carols. And then there is no midweek service for the next two weeks. We return January 11th with our standard midweek service with Tize and Iona. Uh, and then on New Year's Day, if you're looking for a place, we have one service again at 10 a.m. It will also be lessons and carols. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night.